Late at night, a group of survivors traveled by train past an abandoned station, and all present prepared to fight off the wild creatures that dwelled outside. A young boy named Ikoma knew that mankind needed a power that would allow them to fight without fear. Twenty years ago, the people of Hinamoto hid in stations in fear of the dead, and the infected were forced to accept their deaths with dignity. The bespectacled guy wished to get more power in his hands to prevent more deaths. In the morning, the bespectacled guy went to work, at the same time talking to a guy named Takumi about his trials. Suddenly, a high-ranking girl named Ayam showed up at the engineering department, claiming that her father's gun was out of order and asking her to fix it. The boss called Ikoma for this important task and assigned the job to him. Suddenly the painted iron fortress docked at their station, before letting people off the train they are carefully inspected for wounds or bites. During the inspection Ikoma broke the law and stashed the infected tissue for his research, when he looked around he saw an unusual girl named Mume. Suddenly, a half-naked man ran out of a tin wagon, shouting that he was not one of the dead, but no one believed him and the people, gripped by fear, surrounded the suspect to shoot him. At this point, a mechanic intervened and reminded the cowards that the infected would be taken away and put in jail for three days under supervision. However, no one was willing to listen to the words of the loser and a crowd of warriors swooped in to beat Ikoma as pieces of infected flesh fell out of his bag. While the men were repulsed by the mechanic the suspect tried to escape and was shot without question. Since the man died immediately it was clear that he was not infected and the cowards killed an innocent man. After the incident, the top brass decided to put Ikomu under guard. Late in the evening Mume got out of the manor and ran on her business, while Mihanik tried to free himself, as suddenly a mysterious girl came to his cage and introduced herself as Nameless, after which they had a serious conversation. At this time another train called the Rising Sun was approaching the station, but people were confused by the fact that the car was traveling at too high a speed and it was decided to raise the bridge, but it was too late. There was a massive explosion in the city and the living dead started to come out of the flaming cars. An alarm was raised at the station, Mume ran away and the locked up guy didn't wait for his death either. The previously peaceful city was plunged into chaos and civilians died one by one, while the high-ranking officials quietly evacuated to the safety of the Iron Fortress. The bespectacled guy knew well that the dead smell blood and decided to let himself bleed, one of the Zombarians came across an appetizing blood trail. At the same time Ikoma took his homemade creation and started to wait for the monster, as suddenly the roof above him failed and in a matter of seconds he pierced the dead man's chest. However, he felt a strange pain in his right arm and noticed that he too had become infected, but despite this he did not despair and decided that the curse should not reach the brain and for the sake of this Ikoma was ready to put his life on the line, because he was not going to run away anymore. Suddenly, the evil stopped spreading and left his body. At the same time, the seemingly defenseless girl decapitated the dead man with a swift kick of her foot, after which one of her sandals got stuck in a wooden pole. In a terrifying dream, Ikoma's infected mother begged to be saved, as suddenly the bedraggled lad woke up in his bloody manner. Looking at his flabby hands he was happy to realize that he had succeeded in containing the evil, suddenly Takumi burst into his tent and both guys were amazed that the weapon test had succeeded. The guy in the hat was happy that his friend was unharmed, but Ikoma smiled and said that he had been bitten, but waved his hand and assured him that he was fine and that it had not gotten to his head, so they would be able to treat the wounded. There was a riot among the civilians, as Ayam, who was left in charge, was not leading her subjects to the Iron Fortress and was waiting for a signal from her father. Mume suddenly intervened and showed the insolence that she was not to be trifled with, then she found the typist among the crowd of survivors and asked them to follow her. After that, the nameless one rushed into the crowd of the dead and started clearing the way for people. The extraordinary girl without much trouble professionally destroyed zombies on her way. Soon the bespectacled man and his companion reached the Iron Fortress, but before letting the two unknowns on board the warriors demanded them to undress and be checked, but Takumi stopped his friend because no one would not believe him. Bezimanea met the interesting mechanic again and noticed that something had changed in him and he now had an unusual odor. The guy named Kurusu pointed his gun at him and assumed he was dead, but Mume stood up for the mechanic and said he was definitely not infected. Soon Ayam removed the key from her neck and started the engine of the Iron Fortress, the nameless one appeared on the doorstep of the command center and stated that she had gone to bed after ignoring the request for help. Ayam asked her not to touch the girl who fought bravely because she must have been tired, but in fact her body was actively spreading foulness. Suddenly one of the infected squeezed inside the rushing train, then a fearless grey-haired guy ran up to the monster and killed it without hesitation. Even Takumi began to hesitate towards his friend, as the red robes of the guy showed the light of the devil. 
Soon the warriors were on the doorstep of the car and the peaceful people surrendered their savior without question, then a shot rang out and a bloody Ikoma flew off the train. Takumi, who could do nothing to help his best friend, apologized to him. As Ayam looked at the train tracks, she saw her father among the infected and began to mourn the loss. When they reached the next station, the survivors couldn't release the bridge because the lever was blocked and the zombies outside were surrounding the train every second, so Kurusu decided to sacrifice himself to manually activate the lever. Suddenly a guy who was amongst the dead caught the attention of the people and he was fighting back, Ikoma was going to save those who rejected him by himself so that they could continue to live with this shame on their souls. At the same moment the bloody guy let go of the lever with a scream and the light turned green again, then the train slowly started to move on past the bitten guy who was in tears. Suddenly Takumi threw the rope to his friend and ordered him to grab it, but people were against this idea and tried to stop the madman. Just then, Mumei jumped off the train and picked up the rope and attached it to the guy, then ordered Takumi to pull the crybaby back on board. Inside the train, Kurusu and his squad again pointed their muzzle at the boy and ordered him to commit seppuku. A girl intervened and took off her outer garment and declared that the boy in front of them was not dead but not human either, they are kabanari. Mume said that if the guy called her his enemy he would kill her immediately, Ayam intervened and asked the warrior to stop, because if it wasn't for these two no one would be alive. Ikoma also did not want to stay here, because he is a dead man, but the girl stops him and promises people not to leave this carriage. He wakes up in a cold sweat. Mumei was sitting in front of him and when he woke up she said that all his wounds had healed because he had a dead body. Their train was heading to Kengakuku station, which was famous for zombie research, and the two of them were heading there. The brown-haired girl offers the guy to be her shield and starts training him, but suddenly Mumei smells a dead man inside the train and runs out of the locked carriage, breaking her promise. The Iron Fortress was forced to stop due to critical damage and the foreign mechanic stated that they would have the car fixed by morning, Late at night people left the train to perform rituals and pray for their dead relatives. At the same time the cabanery were sitting in their train car and Mume wondered why the guy was hurting when he hit with his right hand. Ikoma took off his glove and exposed the shiny stone tied to his palm, the only memory he had of his sister. When the epidemic broke out, they'd been abandoned and his sister had been caught by a dead man, and he'd been a common coward just running away and trying to blame it on others. When he came back his little sister was lying on the grass and was already infected, he cried and apologized but it was too late and he had no choice but to end her suffering. At this time, the fearful people cordoned off the cabanery carriage and provoked Mume, but Ayam didn't let it go on and stopped the fools. A pregnant woman was praying by the fire when she suddenly felt a strong heartbeat and apologized to her unborn son. Ayam drew her dagger and attacked the grey-haired man but despite the wound Ikom didn't attack her and proved that he wasn't their enemy, so the men who had caused the commotion lowered their weapons and moved away. After seeing the boy back inside the wagon, Ayam was about to leave when Ikoma suddenly lost consciousness. Meanwhile, Mume, who was having fun with the children, said she was hungry and was offered the rest of the soup, but the girl said her diet included blood. While Ayam was tearing cloths to bind her wounds, the grey-haired guy was already hungry and headed for his victim. Among the regular humans, a dead girl was also found and Mume pulled out her blades to finish off the zombie without a doubt, after which it was revealed that the girl was pregnant. Ikoma grabbed the lovely lady in his arms and was about to enjoy her, when Kurusa suddenly smacked the fool with the butt of his gun and brought him to his senses. Without finishing the repairs the humans were forced to start the machine due to the invasion of the dead. The staff decided to lock up the cabanery for fear that they might attack from behind, the people were once again outraged at what was happening and many began to believe that Mrs. Iam was too young to take charge. After the new leader ordered the new leader to build a course through the mountains, she gave up the key to the Iron Fortress. Soon the people who seized the train at gunpoint shoved three people into the carriage to Cabanery, saying that friends of dead men have no place among people. Takumi returned the gun to his friend Takumi, Mume was about to ask for blood from her new buddies, when suddenly they noticed that their car was about to be detached from the train. At that time, the dead began to fall from the mountains and within seconds, the dead crept inside the train, among them was a skillful mutant who had retained his sword skills. Ayam, along with her warriors, headed out to clear the train cars of zombies. Ikoma offered to climb out through the maintenance hatch and stop the skillful, the guys waited for the moment when the train comes out of the tunnel and rushed to attack, on the way they epically killed zombies. At the same time Kurusu, who imagined himself to be a Jedi, took out a katana and slashed the dead, but suddenly he was attacked by a skilled swordsman and pushed the guy away with just one blow, an unimaginable sword duel began between the living and the dead. Subsequently of which Kurusu's sword was broken and he himself was pierced by the enemy blade. 
Ikoma hitched his carabiner to the train with a starving Mume and promised her to cope with what was happening, when suddenly a bout of starvation caught up with him. Despite this the guy continued on his way and said he needed blood to defeat the dead man, at the same time Ayam slashed her arm with her blade and gave the guy a sip of her blood. After taking a small snack, the grey-haired guy pounced on the dead guy and tore his cockpit apart in a couple of moments, after which the humans began to celebrate their victory. The staff was appreciative of Cabanery's contribution and many people were willing to donate their blood to them at times, so the guys overcame one of the obstacles and continued on their way. The train suddenly came to an abrupt halt because the Yashero station was not communicating, but one of the sentries saw the signal, making sure that there were still survivors. Among the survivors, Mume met an acquaintance who used to be her brother's subordinate, and the stranger reminded her that if she made a mistake, she would be gotten rid of. At this time, the staff was thinking about how to clear the Zazino paths, but Mume did not support the idea of going around, after all, she is here to fight and kill the dead. Ikoma persuaded his comrade Takumi and another mechanic to take over the crane. As the cabanery were getting ready to start the operation, he noticed that something was going on with the girl and asked her to stay out of the enemy's lair. Ikoma suddenly noticed that Mume was running into the boiler room, where he asked her to stay out of the way. Once inside the building, the girl began to exterminate the monsters, running to the zombie lair, the grey-haired guy saw the crowds of destroyed bodies. Having reached the command center, the way to which Mume successfully cleared the guy activated the levers, but it was only a small part of the dead. Having started the crane the mechanics began to remove the obstruction from the railroad tracks, Ikom soon returned to his comrades and ordered them to get back on the train and himself took control of the construction crane. However, Kabanari was forced to abandon the controls to help a girl who had fallen to the bottom of the abyss, so the obstacle was lowered and the train was forced to stop again. Suddenly the whole station began to crack at the seams and the two Kabanari were buried under the ground, while the people outside saw a strange creature named Black Smoke. A wounded girl called out to the unnamed girl as she was shot and Mume was ordered to go back to her brother. Suddenly Kabanari, who was under the rubble, wakes up and is overtaken by an attack of evil. Meanwhile, a huge monster consisting of tens of thousands of zombies rushes after the train, but people manage to get into the shelter and close the gate. Ikoma finds the crazy girl and starts digging her out of the collapse and blames his plan for the failure, but he's no better at rushing after her, letting go of the crane. While the guy was trying various ways to free the nameless woman, she was trying to talk him out of it, when suddenly she had another attack of hunger and began to turn dead. However, the grey-haired fellow put a bamboo flask in her mouth and moderated her hunger. Soon Ikoma was forced to abort his attempts to free the girl and taking his weapon he ran to slash at the advancing monsters. Watching the boy desperately fighting the zombie mobs, the girl was haunted by memories of her difficult past in which she lost her mother to humans. After a while Kabanari was illuminated by light and the girl who was in a comatose state was found. The warriors successfully dug up the girl and promised to give her medical attention soon, but as soon as Mumui heard that Ikoma had not been found yet she rushed down the bloody trail to find the boy. When she found the bespectacled boy she started to wake up her savior, but the boy asked her not to rub him because he was in pain. Coming out of the cave the guys again saw the monster called Dark Smoke. Soon the group successfully climbed onto the train, but they still needed to raise the fence and defeat the monster in order to continue their journey. Mume told what she knew about the fused zombie and said that it also had a heart that she was going to pierce. Takumi fired a volley from the cannon, exposing the heart that was deep inside the dead bodies. Mume flew up and shot into the monster, piercing its core. At the same time, the enormous monster broke apart and the nameless one was launched into the air, but Ikoma successfully caught her. After that, the train successfully left the dam station. The next morning, Ikoma was forced to practice sword handling and his skills grew quite quickly because Kabanari are good at imitating what they saw, but he was still far from Kurusu in this regard. Soon the train was approaching the station, which was finally filled with ordinary people. For the first time in a long time, the residents of the Iron Fortress were allowed to relax outside and take a shower. Mume bought herself a new outfit, and not only she and her friend were also transformed. The guys decided to split up and the nameless one was carried away by the rest of the girls because they needed protection and soon a real war began on the market for goods at a low price. Meanwhile, Ikoma and his comrade were replenishing their ammunition supplies, when suddenly a local warrior came to the workshop and demanded that his gun be repaired immediately. At the same time, the conflict began and the man quickly flew out of the store, but he promised to return in the evening for his weapon. At this time, a young man approached Yakaina, who was sorting boxes, and boasted that his father also works on a train called the Rising Sun, 
Hearing this, the girl shuddered because she knew that the entire crew of this train was killed and in order not to upset the boy, she said that she was not aware of other trains. At the same time, another mechanic intervened in the conversation and said that the rising sun was captured by the dead even before the train crashed into the station. The blonde guy did not hide such a difficult truth, because he knows by himself that waiting for someone who will not return is even worse, but the bald-headed kid did not want to believe it because his father promised to return. The warrior of the Iron Fortress, along with his comrade, sat at the entrance to the estate and obediently waited for his mistress, looking inside, he saw Ayama at a meal and involuntarily blushed. Soon, the girl with Kurusu attracted the attention of officials with the help of rifles equipped with steam prepasses that their mechanic invented, demonstrating their incredible power, they were able to agree in exchange for drawings of this weapon to get food and supplies. During the conversation, the gray-haired guy learns about the nameless one's bad thoughts and that she is afraid every morning to lose her humanity and bite others, after hearing this, Ikoma gets angry and declares that with such thoughts, Mume should give up fighting and he promises to definitely bring her back to man. Seeing the girl's sweet smile, the guy remembers his dead sister again. At night, the inhabitants of the Iron Fortress massively wrote their wishes on pieces of paper to later hang them on bamboo, a grey-haired guy climbed higher and announced that he wanted to destroy the dead and restore all rice fields and stations. Ayam also did not waste a moment and announced that she dreams of reopening Aragame Station, Takumi, in turn, wanted to marry three beauties, even Ikoma was blown away. The noblewoman asked what her faithful warrior wished, but Kurusu was ashamed to show her his piece of paper. The nameless one sitting on the fence told her friend that she just wanted to eat rice again. Suddenly, the entire composition of the Iron Fortress was illuminated by a bright light, the reason for this was the most gorgeous fireworks that lit up the night sky. In the morning, Ikoma finds the nameless one talking to her brother in a dream, and at the same time the grey-haired one catches himself thinking that he does not know what he will do with that scoundrel who, posing as a brother, forced her to give up her own name. Soon another train docked at the station, the owners of which were a well-known fighter squad and its leader was a long-haired guy whose name was Amatorai. Seeing her brother, Mume rushed to him, the man was glad to see the nameless one in good health, however, Ikoma was going to find out if the vulgar guy in front of him was a real hero or a monster. A brown-haired girl with a smile on her face told her older brother about her adventure and also notified that there was another cabanery with her on the Iron Fortress who arranged a transformation for himself, soon the guys met, however, Ikoma was not very happy with this character because it was he who taught Mume that the lot of the weak is to die. To further disperse, the pink-haired guy led the company into his possession, but when he saw a breakdown in the mechanism, he asked his subordinate to conduct the guests and began to repair the car, at the same time Ikoma decided to keep the commander of the extermination squad company and help with the repair. During his work, Amatori returned to the conversation on the topic that the strong survive while the weak face a different fate, he does not renounce the weak and stated that it was at that moment that the nameless one decided to fight and she was saved. Suddenly, crowds of the dead began to run to the station and the guys fixing the train scattered on different sides, agreeing to meet on the battlefield. Soon Amatori, along with his squad, left the station in order to deal with the impending threat, the man ordered to fire a volley at the enemy, after which he jumped on a horse and rushed to the battlefield to shred the dead manually. Suddenly, his former subordinate crept up to Amatori, who drew his blade against him and said that there were many people who wanted him dead, but it would only be worth asking and the one-eyed old man was ready to hand over all the ill-wishers and serve faithfully again. However, Amatori refused the services of a traitor, at the same time the one-eyed warrior fell on his master, but the long-haired guy easily knocked the former subordinate to the ground and presented him with a blade. Upon seeing such a sight, Ikoma asked Amatori to stop, but the fighter commander does not hesitate to pierce the mercenary's heart. The grey-haired guy demanded an explanation of what had happened, at the same time the pink-haired guy asked if the victim was his brother or a close relative and why was the guy so angry. However, the bespectacled man was not going to calm down and, seeing the stupidity of his comrade, Takumi stood up for him and promised to carry out educational work with him. I am also apologized on behalf of Ikoma, but the commander of the fighter squad did not hold a grudge and said that he would gladly accompany these wonderful people to Kangagoku Station. After that, the two trains merged and from now on the Iron Fortress was under the reliable protection of hunters. The mechanic was talking to his friend about Amatori and what he taught the nameless one, he was also very concerned about the fact that the girl claimed that she had never been bitten by infected people, which means that she was stabbed in some other way. In the past, a long-haired guy threw a blade to a girl and said that if she wanted to live, then she should protect herself, at the same time, a young Mume stabbed her mother's killer. 
With the help of artificial injection of filth into her body, the girl became a cabanery. At the next examination, the doctor said that the girl's wound was quite large, but there should be no problems. After that, the long-haired guy turned to the nameless one with a request, he wished for the family key to the iron fortress that was in the possession of the I am lady, it did not bother the commander of the hunters because the nameless one is much stronger than an ordinary girl and therefore he does not see any problems. In the main carriage, a heart consisting of filth was beating and the soul in itself was filled with the dead, Ikoma clutched his head from a sudden pain and pointing to the front carriage declared that there were dead. At the same time, an unnamed woman climbed into Iam's room and demanded the key to the fortress, at the same time a blue-blooded girl asked Kabanari what he was for? Mume denounced her kanai in her right hand and said that the girl could not defeat her, so she should give the key, at that moment Yukine entered the room and gave the key to the warrior, after which she left the room satisfied. In fact, the key that the girl slipped was from the boiler room. Amatori quickly realized that this was not the right key and the naive girl was simply deceived, at that moment Ikoma began knocking on the car and the older brother said that if the guy broke into them, he would have to kill him. To prevent this, the girl went out on the street to talk to the bespectacled man and as a result of the conversation, he found out that it was her brother who turned her into a cabanery. Now the grey-haired guy was sure that Amatori was not a hero at all, but a scoundrel who enjoyed killing.